Stay tuned. Band in Seattle starts right now. Hey, welcome to Band in Seattle. I'm Xander. Band in Seattle features up and coming bands from all over hoping for their big break. Tonight, we feature Aaron Jones and The Way. Seattle songwriter Aaron Jones' mature sound has an intimate, rich, fresh style. Jones's striking songs blend alternative rock, punk, blues, hip hop, and soul. They're here in our studio now, ready to share their music and stories. We'll be right back. <laughs> Aaron Jones in the way. Trust me, this dude is raw. Taught him everything he knows about guitar. Sure did. I've been playing music since uh, I was a kid, really, in mean, any way I could. I didn't have an instrument for a long time, probably till I was about 13, but, um, you know, I grew up in the church and listening to gospel music, and so music was a very big part of my life. Uh, and once, you know, I was old enough to, or could find an instrument that I could express myself on, that's when I really started taking off with it. The guitar came to me uh, almost naturally when I picked it up. I don't know, I mean, it almost like I, I just understood it right away, you know, and even though I knew nothing about it, I just kind of, the notes, the everything, the strings, they just made sense to me. Uh, so my hands, they're not very large hands, but I have really long fingers and they're very articulate. The way that I play guitar is, it's a hybrid style which was uh, really pioneered by, by Jimi Hendrix. Is he could both play chords and the solo at the same time. Uh, I grew up worshiping three-piece bands, so uh, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, uh, Jimi Hendrix and the Experience, and all these people, they, they had a huge sound in their band, but with, with very little instrumentation, so I really wanted to also bring that sound to the stage, and in order to do that, I really had to study what they were doing, so, uh, and the way that I play, I, 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 I play just like that, I, I try to play the chord and the solo at the same time. Hey, 
born and raised right here in Seattle, Washington, and I grew up during that grunge era, right, when grunge was getting really, really popular. So I experienced the grunge and the post-grunge era, and um, that kind of was the tone that I really was, was, was searching for, or kind of striving to make uh, through my music. Um, but at the time, when I was younger, I, I, I played a lot of blues, you know, so because of my influences. So um, as I got older and, and kind of understood myself more, uh, the true nature of my sound came out, which happens to be this kind of grungy, bluesy sound, you know? I love the way Feeding From The Devil's Hands creates this ambiance that's kind of solemn and then it just hits you like a ton of bricks. We recently just released a, a music video for it. Getting to, to see the local crowd come out and participate in that was was very awesome. We've been playing for a number of years and we were trying and trying and trying to find out what it was that made it us us, what's our tone. And I think feeding from the devil's hands is, is a way for us to be like, yeah, this is this is us. This is Seattle right here. This is Seattle, this is us. These are somebody else's records. I remember walking in before they had gone on, they went on stage, I, I introduced myself to them, they went on stage, they did that thing. What blew my mind was one little spot where the crowd was kind of, it wasn't sparse, but they were spread out throughout this bar. And literally he jumps off the stage doing a guitar solo and walks all the way to the other side of the bar and came back in and they followed him. It was like the Pied Piper. I love my children and I'll do anything for them, so that comes first, but this band is definitely a big priority for me. Music's my passion. It's, it's what keeps me going. If I don't have music, I might as well not be alive. I, I'd rather someone play something that I can feel, you know. I think that's the main thing that gets me with Aaron is uh, we both like to play a minor tonality. It's kind of a sad um, sound or a dark sound. Uh, so DeAndre calls it a sadness, but I, I call it a darkness. And oftentimes we connotate darkness with bad things, but I don't think it has to be that way. And when you think about Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain played very dark music, but at the same time he was bringing the, the elevating the audience into an excited frenzy. <laughs> absolutely love music, I love every aspect of music. And when I'm on stage, I forget about the practice, I forget about, I forget about the technicality, and I get out there and I, I try to have fun and bring that passion to the stage because the more passionate I am about my music, the more passionate the audience is about being involved in my music. And that's the whole point, is to, uh, is to play music for the people, and not just for myself.
Strangers, Megan Sealing says Aaron Jones in the Way is one of the most entertaining performances she's seen so far this year. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more. It's a breakup song, and it is a song that talks about even though you know that this is you, you love this person, this person loves you, it just does not work and it won't work. And at the end of the day, it hurts to say goodbye, and you have to say goodbye, but your love still stays right there. So that's, that's what My Love Remains is about. My Love Remains is the ballad, and I think it could go down in history as one of the great songs. With myself, pitch lies. Do you remember when we were best friends? My Love Remains is a song that aesthetically takes from that Hendrix tone, what I was talking about and playing the solo and the chord at the same time. A very Hendrix uh, influenced tone that we bring to the stage there. He plays a lot of his chords the way Jimi Hendrix used to play them. Um, he, he'll play the low note with his thumb wrapped around the top of the guitar, and that allows him to play these sweeping, moving chords, kind of make it sound like he's, he's doing a lot more with just one guitar. The perfect guy. My family all plays music and they had a family band um, and they needed a bass player and I was 19 and not really doing anything, just kind of sitting around the house so they were like, DeAndre, go get that bass and play these bass lines. <laughs> I grew up playing baseball. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area of California, played baseball my whole life up until junior year in high school and my family moved from a huge city to a little city, got rebellious. Um, quit playing baseball because I realized it was my dad's passion that I was pursuing and not my own. Um, the first friend that I made was a punk rock kid um, and it was kind of my way of standing out I guess. I look at Aaron, he's sharp. His lyrics are soulful. They come from the heart. So it's a different set of parameters for him. I'll let him tell you that. But I love watching him figure songs out. Me, it was about saying words that are kind of funny, but I jabbed somebody like Cosmo or MTV or whoever in a roundabout way. Rock videos, not need bimbos and all that. But when I watch him write, it's he has to be able to make me cry with four words. I love that.
I um I actually like practice you know certain principles and and certain teachings that have allowed me to understand what it is that I'm asking for and I have a firm belief that no matter what you ask for in this lifetime if you ask for it you're going to get it the question is are you ready for it you know and uh, and and oftentimes we aren't you know oftentimes we aren't I mean when you look at Kurt Cobain or even Jimmy these people they were like I want to be huge oh yeah yeah no problem you're huge now well, what are you gonna do with it There's no way that you are going to succeed in this industry by talent alone anymore. It's not gonna happen, okay? Back in the 90s, back in the 80s, that was the case. At this point though, you are your own business person, you are your own artist. That means you have to define what that means to be an artist. And I think that's where a lot of local people uh, sometimes fall short, is they, they, don't, they don't realize that it takes so much more than just, it's a package deal. And you have to create that package. It takes so much more than just stepping on a stage and be talented or re recording a nice song or something like that. This is image, this is social media, this is your persona, you are your own brand, and now it's up to you to put it out to the people. You know what it is. My position in all of this is that I have to humble myself. I have to go, these plaques on the wall came from something different, a totally different business model, right? And you have to humble yourself and understand that or else you hurt him. You go, oh man, come on, we're gonna go to LA. I'm gonna introduce you to Mo Austin at Warner Brothers. That doesn't work anymore, right? So he gets to meet some big shot and the guy does nothing for him. I put him on the shelf for the next three years. Fans want a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the artist nowadays. When I was coming up, when I was in the game, when I was hot, the artist was a mystery, an enigma, like Bigfoot. It was like, I loved Prince, but I couldn't get to him. You know, I couldn't touch him, I couldn't reach him, I couldn't communicate with him. Fans won't tolerate that now. You pull out, it's out of sight, out of mind. Other artists have, have gotten caught up in this egocentric uh, kind of idea of music, which is I'm gonna make my music sound like it should sound for me. This music's not for me, you know. I, I'm gifted with the ability to play the music, but if it was just for me, I'd sit in my room and play my guitar to myself all day long, you know. This music is for the people, so the more excited the people get, the more excited I get. And um, and I try to maintain that, that, that honest, you know, unique and uh, uh, organic relationship with people and I try to remember everybody I meet and I, I try to extend my hand out and to show them I'm, I'm human just like them because ultimately I want them to be great too. We were playing at a festival on Whidbey Island one day and it was the last song and one of my strings broke okay so I could have kept playing with the broken string or I could have stopped and just broke my strings and finished the set. So I decided to stop and started ripping my strings out and the crowd is going crazy nuts. They're losing it. So uh, my manager comes to me and goes, dude, you should just do that at the end of the show. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I started implementing that into our, our, our bigger stage shows, which was just ripping the strings off, pulling them off and just leaving the guitar on stage to sing.
Thanks for watching Band in Seattle. To see the complete concerts held in our studios, go to our webpage, bandinseattle.com. Next week, we'll return with more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle.